meetings at the conference, who are going to ask their questions uh, for Dr. Carey. So first, I probably want to give her justice with her salon, which is one of our first stellar salon. And my salon school, as you know, promotes everything about high quality salons across the country. And your salon was our first one we awarded the Stellar uh, Salon Award. Dr. Perry is not only a natural hair specialist, she's also a trichologist. And I'm not going to try to explain what that is. I will let her, her um, explain to the audience. Say hi to the hair nistas across the country. Hello, hair nistas. And thank you, Veronica, for inviting me. It's such a pleasure to be here with her and the MySalonScoop.com team. I am Dr. Carey, the owner of Mahogany Hair Revolution, and a trichologist. And trichology, all of my hair needs to, is a scientific study of hair and scalp disorders. So I'm not a medical doctor, I'm a PhD type doctor, but I do understand a lot of the conditions, um, medical conditions that a lot of women and men are afflicted with when it comes to their scalp and their hair. And tell us, how long have you had your salon? Actually, salon is plural. Oh, right. <laughs> well, I have two hair studios. Mahogany Hair Revolution is a natural hair studio that focuses on promoting healthy hair growth. And then I have Mahogany 2, which is located in the same um, courtyard as our natural hair studio. It's a full service salon, which celebrates the versatility of our hair because we can wear it straight and we can wear it braided. And we want to give women options in how they decide to wear their hair. And um, we'll be celebrating three years in September. Wow, that's, that's really great. I mean, one of your clients recommended you to us, and so Mahogany Hair um, Revolution is in the My Salon Scoop Hair directory. You can click on the uh, site and read some reviews. Um, so we, we only found you because of the great work that you've been doing in the Los Angeles area. And I invite everybody just to click on this site. She has a really catchy music for the theme song. I love the theme song. Um, and I think you said you wrote the, the theme and the melody yourself, right? Yes. Uh, yes, actually, yes. Please visit our website, www.mahoganyrevolution.com. Um, the lyrics are original. The music is original. The music itself is produced by a good friend of mine. Um, and then the lyrics are something that I wrote. Um, but it, it turns out that it is very, very catchy, so I need to get it on iTunes very soon. I know, we've been joking about that all day that we all know the beat to uh, your website. <laughs> so yes, please visit our website. We have plenty of pictures. We're definitely posted on the MySalonScoop.com website. And then we have more pictures of all the wonderful styles that we do in our salon, as well as bios and pictures of some of our stylists as well. Okay. So why don't we start with some of the questions? Um, and actually, just for those of you who may have joined a few minutes late, this is our second Hair Needs to Chat. We're going to do a live Ask a Stylist, where we have Dr. Hair from um, Mahogany Hair Revolution, a Los Angeles-based or based salon. And she's here to answer any questions you have on your son regarding hair. And myself, as you know, I call myself the super client. That's, that's how I, why I started my salon school. About I just wanted to have this thirst for knowledge about like what should I really be doing to keep my hair healthy. And I'll start off with the first question as I hear me students submit the question. Um, when do you know? I mean, I know you're a trichologist, and most of us don't go to stylists that have that certification. Um, one of the things um, a lot of people worry about is when should they really see a dermatologist? When does it kind of cross that line between you really need to have professional medical advice? Um, when you need that professional medical advice, if your stylist is not familiar with different scalp conditions, if you're experiencing yes. any type of severe itching, itchy, crawly feeling, which may be a sign of a fungal infection or severe flaking, at that point you should see a dermatologist. Also, if you're experiencing hair thinning, and let's say the thinning took place over a short period of time, um, you may want to see a dermatologist as well. They can do a scalp biopsy to help you determine um, the type of hair loss you're experiencing. Especially in black communities, um, a lot of the hair loss does result from fungal infections, chemical burns, heat burns, things like that. And so a dermatologist can help you diagnose that. Thank you. So then going back to my list of pre-submitted questions, uh, we had a hair nista Dolores from Maryland asked on that same subject. She said she's always had very thin hair and she just wants to know how she can grow it better and thicken it up. 
something she struggles with. Okay, well, without having met Mr. Lawrence, um, more than likely it may just be the natural texture of your hair. You may have fine hair, and if your hair is naturally fine, there really isn't anything that you can do to make it more thick. You can continue to use products that are moisturizing and lubricate your strands to preserve your hair, to promote length. You want to make sure that you're doing things internally, staying healthy. But to thicken your strands, that's something that unfortunately I'm not going to try to sell you on. It's genetic, it's genetically based. Yeah, that's something we were talking about earlier. You know, people bring in pictures or um, they struggle with like, looking in the mirror at themselves and kind of getting over the genetics. Can you speak to like the role genetics really plays? Yes, when it comes to hair, um, there's texture and pattern. So the texture of your hair describes the width of your hair strand. So we have fine textures, we have medium textures, and then we have very coarse. And then the curl pattern just, um, describes the pattern of your hair. So you may have straight hair, curly hair, or wavy hair, or super coiled hair, as I like to describe, um, for a lot of individuals who are black. And so when it comes to the word thinning, um, I use that word when it results in something that's happening in the scalp. So for instance, going back to Dolores' question, if you're experiencing some form of thinning, meaning you're starting to see some form of hair loss, um, your hair was thicker at one point and now it's thinner, there may be something causing thinning. But if your whole life your hair has felt very fine, that's your texture. Great, that's great information. Um, and then I guess kind of the opposite of not just thinning, but just long hair. I mean, I get emails, I want long hair. <laughs> what can I do? What is really the secret? Uh, we had a hair nista, Jewel from Brooklyn, New York, who's asking, you know, what really is that secret to growing long hair? And her stylist talks to her about trimming her hair. Okay. Is, is that really helping you grow your hair? Well, trimming your ends is not helping you grow your hair. It's a myth, a very popular hair myth, that trimming your ends makes your hair grow. Um, the practice of trimming the ends, one comes from the art of styling hair. So, as stylists and cosmetologists, we're artists. So when we straighten your hair, then oftentimes, because the hair grows in different patterns and ways, every follicle grows on its own um, time schedule. So when the hair grows, it tends to be uneven. So as stylists, we naturally want to create a shape in your hair. So that's where trimming comes in, um, to give it more shape, to make it more even. And then also, too, when we straighten our hair, oftentimes the heat, whether it's in the flat iron, the hot comb, or if we're using some type of chemical process, it causes the chemical bonds in our hair to break and sometimes crack the cuticle. So that leads to split ends and breakage. So trimming comes as a method of removing the hair of those damaged ends and making the hair look neater. Now if you're trying to grow your hair out, constantly trimming it, you're cutting away the growth. So I like to tease clients and say, <laughs> you know, are you alive? If you're alive, your hair is growing. But if you're constantly trimming your ends, you're cutting away the length that you would like to see. So ultimately, when it comes to growing your hair and seeing a certain length, you have to begin to incorporate practices into your hair care regimen that's not going to be so damaging to your hair shaft, which will cause or lead to the practice of having to cut it so frequently. In addition, it's, it's all about systemic health. So it sounds very, um, what's worth I'm looking for? I mean, something we talk about all the time, very common, you know, drink your water, take your vegetables, eat right. But it's so very true because your hair is an organ. It's an accessory organ. So your body doesn't need it, but still it's being fed by the nutrients and the vitamins in your bloodstream. So as long as you are staying healthy, then you're gonna produce healthy, strong hair strands. And as long as you're not over processing and you think it's gonna cause extra damage to your hair, then you'll start to see some Aren't you a dog? No, that's, that's really great to kind of take ownership of your whole body. Because I think people don't realize that if they want healthy hair, they have to probably have a healthy lifestyle. Which is what the healthy hair is probably a healthy lifestyle. It definitely is. It definitely is. One of the models in trichology is that hair is a barometer of health. So because your body doesn't need your hair, your hair is healthy. It's a reflection that holistically your body is in good shape. And if you're lacking in any type of nutrient or vitamin, then we can tell through your hair. Let me go back to her.